be here on stage and um, I hope you had a great time so far um, and I'm so delighted to tell you about what we've been doing in the NEOS React UI. So, um, I'm Sebastian Kofer, has been in the project since quite some time, that's my Twitter handle. Um, I work of, at Sandstorm, actually I'm one of the co-founders um, and actually um, on this conference we're also launching a short pro uh, product which we call XPly, which is a data analytics platform um, and so if you would like to know more about that, just catch any of the Sandstorm people. Okay, but I don't want to talk about that, I want to talk about NEOS and the NEOS React UI. And I would like to start, take us some steps back, and actually what I would like to do is um, first, you might have heard that we are somehow rewriting, and you might wonder what is actually going on in this project and, and these kind of things. So I would like to give some story with our current user interface. So actually it started quite a long time ago. We started at Typo3 Developer Days 2011. I remember that Christopher and me and Christian and some others were sitting together and actually there the foundations for the current user interface with Ember.js were laid. So that was in 2011 and actually Ember was still called Sprout Core 2 Alpha 1 or something. Um, so that is a long time ago. And you know what happened. I mean, we started with this really slim prototype and over time new features added and added and added. And um, so in the beginning it looked like that and then come another component and another component and still another component. And you see it, it roughly fit into the picture, but you didn't really get the, the really big um, overview. So the system just grew over time. And actually what we would like to achieve is more an architecture like that, which looks more clean, more, more polished and, and more well working. And so that's like the, the technical, one of the technical reasons why we thought, okay, there's some work needed in the current user interface. We need to do something about it. But there were also some user things which happened. So people said the editing speed is bad. So not the editing speed per se, but especially the speed it takes from loading the page until you can actually edit. So it takes like between two to four seconds at least until you can actually edit content. And that's quite a lot if you reload your, your, your whole page from time to time. Additionally, um, I, I think you all have felt some pain when trying to customize the user interface. Um, so unplanned extensibility is basically not possible in the current user interface and there are also not many planned extension points. So you, you, you probably have written some editor in the inspector, that's pretty much the only place where you can extend the current uh, NEOS interface itself, um, but that's basically it. And actually who would have liked to, to uh, customize the Aloha editor, anybody? Yeah probably add some CSS classes or stuff like that, right? Um, and actually, that is not possible with the current UI or with the current architecture, um, and we felt that pain as well. So that is one, one big topic which, which started us thinking. The other one was, um, there are some interaction between the website itself and the NEOS UI. So you know that we don't put in, uh, we basically render the NEOS UI around your website. So that means uh, the CSS and the JavaScript of your website might interact with the NEOS user interface. So um, you have, I guess everybody has seen that, right? So if you create a JavaScript slider, it works on the first page. It by default doesn't work on any other when you switch pages. Um, but you need to do some work and the same for CSS media queries. You actually need to um, take into account all kinds of states from the UI to make it really work and have this nice editing experience which we uh, actually would like to have. So the question is, um, should we rewrite or should we fix? And um, it was like one and a half years ago. Nobody in the team was really sure about that and nobody really took the lead. So we saw the problems, but we were really unsure like what to do about it. And then two things happened. The first thing is React took the world by storm. So who knows React and who uses it in production? Okay, so some of you, everybody has heard about it, right? So that's the one thing which happened. It basically uh, gave a lot of input. It streamlined a lot of floating ideas. Um, the so that's what has happened over the last few years. And the second thing is that these two people happened. 
<laughs> so what I mean with that. So Wilhelm and Till, um, um, in December 2015, they had this crazy idea of saying, what if we just rewrote the user interface with React? And actually, um, they have not been in touch with any of us core guys. They were just two uh, nice people from the community, and they had some time between Christmas and New Year. And actually, <laughs> yeah, they just started doing that. <laughs> So that's how it all started in, in December 2015. And actually, in, in January 2016, so beginning of last year, um, they wrote this project proposal on, on uh, Discuss. So just rewrite the user interface using React. And, um, um, and they wrote this proposal with, all, with a demo video and like what the benefits would be and all these things. And actually, uh, we have discussed a lot about that. So it has been a really, 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 really long discussion. But that was finished in March 2016. Actually, the discussion was mostly in January up to, I think, beginning of February. And we actually took the decision to do that. So we said, OK, it looks so extremely promising. Um, let's just try to, to actually implement the UI in React. And I personally, for instance, have been quite skeptical at the beginning, you know, because it's just so much work. And um, but uh, and I had a lot of concerns, and you know, and then we just talked with each other, and I was like, you know, I have this concern, and they're like, yeah, you know, we have we feel we feel the same, and we just tried to we aligned ourselves really, really well. Um, so that is um, extremely positive. Um, and also, while we were discussing it, and while, for instance, I was getting into React by this project, so I didn't use React beforehand. I knew it, it was there, but I have never actually seen it in production. And, um, but there are a few things which um, convinced me. And the basic idea is that React is actually like the one really, really big emerging JavaScript standard for big applications emerging today. Um, and that has a number of reasons. Um, it's, um, it, it almost feels like synchronous coding, so usually it feels like you're actually programming in a backend language in a certain way, at least. It feels extremely predictable, so usually either it works or it doesn't. There's no weird state in between in most cases. And it's quite fast by default, but we can easily optimize it to be fast as hell. So. Um, what we did then is we invited Wilhelm and Till to the team, and then Dimitri and me joined uh, the rewrite effort. And um, so, um, and then uh, over time, more and more and more people helped out. So, like us four did most of the really big contributions, but there are many others. You see the list down here who contributed parts of it. So, thanks, thanks, thanks to all of you. Without you, that wouldn't have been possible at all. Um, right. So, um, actually, I don't want to talk too much about it anymore. I just want to show it for you. So, what should we do? Um, actually, this is uh, our Sandstorm website. I just installed the, the new UI, the new one into it. And so, let's just um, try it out. So, we go to Neos, exclamation mark. I'll explain that in a bit. We log in to the back end. So that's the new UI. Looks familiar. We change some content. We upload a new image. We crop it. We hide some things and I'm, I'm, you know, I've just I didn't want to record it more fast than it actually is. It's real. It's real time. So, and I'm not the fastest clicker, so we need to wait a little. <laughs> so then we publish the stuff. Let's say we'll create a blog post now. Um, so go to this long blog list. Um, just create a new one. Give him some name. Just add some element. <clears throat> the, 
then I'm actually, I was not sure what to write, so I just went to Neos IO and grabbed some content. I hope nobody will, um, will sue me for that. Um, so just copy and paste that. Put it in here, just do some minor modifications, and yeah, I'm happy with my page. Right, so that's the new Neos UI. Um, I'll decompose that now, but hopefully what you've seen is that it looks extremely familiar for you. Um, it looks pretty much like the old one. It should feel pretty much like the old one. You might have spotted some differences, um, some small differences, um, and overly, we'll, we just, uh, it feels quite responsive and it works. Right. So I would like to walk you through the main features now. So as already said, it should work mostly like before. So we have inline content editing, documentary, structure tree, inspector, image editor, reference editor, inspector views, content constraints, publishing, dimension switcher, node tree, drag and drop, edit preview modes, inline links to other nodes, inspector validators. <laughs> so I tried to practice that. So um, as said, we have many, many features in place. Um, I want to be open with you. So of course, we also have some features we are still missing. So um, the most prominent ones is that the reference and references editor are still unstable or not yet working yet. Uh, we have a plan for that, but we just didn't get along to actually implement that. So uh, we cannot link to assets yet or external URLs. <laughs> actually, linking to external URLs is a really easy one, but nobody fixed the regular expression yet. Um, and we are missing some details like the target workspace selector if you're working with multiple target uh, workspaces. No, no, it works. Actually, it works? Okay, then Dimitri fixed it in the meantime. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and the main idea behind it is that it is extensible. Um, I'll explain a lot more about the extensibility principles in a bit, so just I'll just, uh, you have to wait for that a little more. But first, let's focus on the features the editor um, will help we have. So what we have been doing, um, we actually completely switched the editing engine from Aloha to CK Editor. Um, CK Editor, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> CK Editor is a uh, really uh, nice editor um, from CK Source, an open source project. and a company which backs it. I think they're from Poland and they have given us awesome support. So we, we actually we're hanging out in a Slack channel and we've had a few questions regarding the integration and they were like, like the CTO of them responded within one hour and I was like, whoa, that's crazy. So thanks for them. Um, what we provide by them is you have extremely robust sanitizing. So I once took the full, uh, I just opened Spiegel online, copied the full content, put it in Neos, and it just worked. It didn't break anything. It, it, it uh, had the correct markup as defined with all the, uh, so all the allowed elements and everything not allowed was out there. So that looks really promising. Um, we have keyboard shortcuts for stuff like bold and italic and, and these kind of things. <laughs> you know, it's actually quite funny that we never got along doing that with Aloha. Aloha could do that, but we just didn't find a good way to actually implement, uh, ac activate it in a good way. And hoo -hoo -hoo, custom CSS classes are possible. <laughs> so just as an example, um, what you can actually do is um, um, I can select some text. I click this nice button, ignore the icon for now, and you see the text changes just as you would imagine. I mean, it's there's nothing much to it, but that's like the basic um, idea. The next big thing, the content is actually shown in an iframe. So that means um, uh, we actually have the content, uh, or the, 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 the uh, Neos UI uh, in the outermost frame, and the content area is a real, real iframe. Um, that means first, there is no unplanned interaction anymore between Neos and the website, so you cannot break Neos anymore by having interesting CSS styles or by having JavaScript, um, or, we, or Neos cannot break your JavaScript anymore in most, most, most cases. And um, actually, media queries work, and that means the following. Quite nice, isn't it? <laughs> so, so that means um, 
we have in responsive preview mode. So you know the preview modes already, I guess, or some of you at least. And the only thing which changed now is that you can specify a width and a height for the preview window just in the settings, and this will enable that behavior. Um, so there's nothing which you, or that it's really easy to configure and it can be just used. So uh, I think that's for me personally one of the most interesting or nice features when editing a website and seeing just how it looks on mobile, at least in an estimation. Right. So now I then uh, would like to do some kind of experiment. I would like to try uh, to load the new and the old UI in parallel. Um, so what you see on the left is the old UI, what you see on the right is the new UI, and I just want to measure how long it takes until we can actually start editing content. And uh, we push the login button at the same time. So actually I log in, press login. So uh, new UI finished, old UI finished. So that means this is the difference in, in loading and interaction uh, which you have, which we will see at every single um, page reload, essentially. So if your user has to reload your website, uh, the new UI should feel a lot more responsive. And actually, it loads fast, and it feels fast, and that's really nice. Um, who has spotted a difference in the video just in the beginning, the long one? Any? Of, oh, one. Okay, cool. So there was one bigger difference. Um, um, who likes the, the way of inserting content in the old UI? Like inserting pages and you know this small icon? I've actually, I had to explain that to my customers every single time what that means. Um, and I've, I'm not sure if I have to long press it, if I have to hover over it, or actually how to do the selection. I always mess that up. So I don't want to bash the old UI, of course, right? I mean, it was an important step. So if I create that, um, I create a page, then I, I'm like, oh, what's the title again? I switch to another tab, <laughs> and then I switch back, and like, oh, shit, it's unnamed. Oh. Um, <laughs> then I try to rename it, and then I have to remember that uh, we have uh, that I also have to change the URL segment, and actually, uh, <laughs> in production websites, we've often seeing you know unnamed one, unnamed two, until I don't know unnamed twenty, um, and people never notice, and that's totally understandable. I mean, you know. <laughs> so what we've done with the new UI is the following: um, we have um, it's just a plus icon here. You have the insert mode just to select here. You see directly how it evolves here, and we have some kind of mini wizard. Um, where you can just enter the node title and all other required properties just right uh, in place. So you can tap to something else, look something up, and the UI will just stay the way it is. So that means to create node wizard is actually completely redone. Um, it's not that we think this is like the perfect solution, but we just think it works a lot better than just the current UI, and it, uh, it's just a good pragmatic way to solve the issue. Um, so actually, we tried to stay as close as possible to the old UI, except when we know of such a really serious usability issue, then we actually tried to fix that um, without um, you know, reinventing just a completely new concept. So we've actually seen most of the user visible main features for now. Um, we have lots of ideas uh, what to build based on this uh, foundation we've laid. Um, so, in the old UI, it was basically not possible to, to innovate um, because it was just too, it just grew too big, as I've explained in the beginning. So, we have lots and lots of ideas what to build here. So, you can expect quite some more innovation in terms of structured editing, about better translation views, and so on. The team, we have lots of cool ideas about that. And we'll also start again with, you know, like refreshing the UI generally. So, looking at the UI from the big perspective as one of the next steps and seeing like how we can, uh, how we can refresh it um, um, to stay up to date. Right. So, one of the most important features for us is extensibility. Um, so, uh, we have already seen that we call Neo as a content application platform. So, the term application platform is extremely important in that. That means that um, you, I think it works quite well on the PHP side of things. You can change things, you can modify things uh, in planned and unplanned ways. But for the JavaScript side, it never really worked out. So 
Um, just again to refresh, you might know this slide already, so we as a team try to think in extensibility in two different terms. So we have planned extensibility on the one side, which is basically we as a team think, okay, this is something where people should, should be able to hook into. And the good thing about that is um, this is supported during updates. So it, you can, if you can rely on that also during major upgrades and we'll let you know when things change there. On the other side, um, it might be that you know you look, you browse the new source code and you're like, oh, this is cool, but this should just be a little different, and that's unplanned extensibility. Um, basically, that's on your own risk, but it's also extremely important because it solves you, it saves you from um, patching your project. We we don't want you to patch the source code ever. You don't need that, and um, so that's why we create we provide both parts, both both points of extensibility. And while preparing that, I thought like, okay, let's just create a new custom in, uh, inspector editor and there are lots of cool React components actually in place. So there's this color picker component. I was like, oh, that looks quite nice. I want to have that in Neos. So let's integrate that in the, um, in the inspector you see on the right here. And now it's getting a little more technical. Um, so what do we have to do for that? First is it's a JavaScript project, so we create a package JSON. Um, the package JSON looks pretty standard, I would say. Um, so uh, we depend on some Neos project dependency. Don't worry too much about that. The important thing is that there are two build scripts in here. There's a build and a watch command in here. And we have this tooling called Neos React Scripts, what you see here in, li in line three and four. And actually, um, these tools handle the complete build chain for you, and they ensure that it fits well inside Neos, and you don't have to do anything Bad, basically. So what we do here is we, uh, this is the scripts, we'll run them later. Um, we have um, the target directory where to output the, the result, and then we can just declare dependencies just as you know that from, from NPM. We don't have to, to, to declare React or any of these core components. They will be automatically included by these scripts, and we ensure that this fits together to the version uh, we deliver in Neos so that you don't end up with two React versions or stuff like that. Then in the index file, um, you can just output anything just for getting started. And then the next thing is you run the watcher. So that means what you need to do is first npm install as usual in this directory we've just created. And when this is done, um, we can just uh, run npm run watch. We get um, some nice Neos logo, a little out of proportion. And now it compiled successfully, and it will automatically pick up any change you do to the source file, and this will enable rapid uh, development of such uh, um, of extensions, basically, of the Neos UI. What you still need to do is you need to load the generated code into um, into Neos itself, and you can do that using settings YAML. So that means just put um, inside Neos, Neos UI resources JavaScript, you just give them some key, and then you basically point it to the resource, which is the output of the build process. So just with two, line of, uh, two lines of code in the settings YAML, you actually load your plugin. This is the API, how to load things. So um, now we are actually at the point where, where we can implement the editor. So now everything is in place. The console log we've just added is actually there. So we modify the index.js a little to require a manifest file. I'll explain this, what this is in a second. And this is what the manifest files look like, and this needs some explanation now. So the concept of extensibility in Neos is centered about uh, around what we call a registry. Um, a registry contains, for instance, which editors exist, which buttons are available in the, uh, in the toolbars, um, which formatting you can apply in the, in the editor, um, and all kinds of these kind of things. And actually, while running the UI, this registry is immutable. That means it doesn't change at all. Um, the only place where you are allowed to modify this registry is inside what we call this manifest file. And um, so what you do here, um, in line five, you will um, create the, uh, you, you say this is a manifest file, you give it some name, and then you get the global registry. So the registry is tree-shaped, basically. So we have a big registry which contains smaller registries and they contain the values. So that means we can fetch the inspector editor registry. That's what you see here. And what we then can do is we can add something to this registry. So we just give the thing a name. We say, okay, Neos, Neos UI, blah, blah, blah. 
we just call it the color picker editor, and here we load the React component for the color picker editor. Um, and that's how we actually load code into um, the new Neos UI. And now we have to implement the color picker editor. Um, so uh, actually, that's just standard React code. Um, just a question, who can read that? OK, for the others, I just give some rough explanations. So we just extend from component. Don't worry about this pure stuff. That's just details, implementation details. Um, the basic concept of React is actually um, you have a component. It gets some values in. These values are called props. Um, like properties, just they are lazy and don't want to type that much. Um, and then you have a render function which outputs the HTML uh, or outputs nested components. And if you want to uh, pass something back to the outside, um, then you just give in a callback function as property. Um, and this is what you call for actual modification. So that means uh, for our color picker, we get two uh, things. We have the value as public API. The value contains the currently selected value. That's the API with Neos. And then there is a commit function passed in, which you need to call if the value has changed. So in render, we just take the sketch picker from this React color components we've loaded. And we pass in color and on change. And we just post process the color so that it's a hex value. And that's basically it. Right. Then we can just include the editor and node types YAML, as you know. So um, inside uh, UI uh, inspector editors, inside node types, just the same way you configure a select editor. And what you get by that is um, I just added some, some, some front end rendering to it, and um, which outputs the color. So here you see the color picker. You can choose your colors. Um, um, you can, you know to do the normal stuff, press apply. You see the rendering, so I just added it as a background color. I'm not a designer, as you obviously see with this um, thing. And I'm not good at choosing colors either. <laughs> That's planned. Everything in the inspector is planned. Um, Well, uh, you cannot say using registry is planned. So registry is definitely is used for both ways. And actually, you see in the registry if it's a planned or an unplanned extension point. That's documented in the registry here. Yeah. Um, yeah, you see. So you can choose these colors here, and it just works. You know, there is no lost update. There is no way this might break. Um, it it will just update always. Um, and yeah, that's quite nice to integrate React components this way, actually. And is the foundation for bigger um, integrations. What you can also do is uh, add a custom CK editor style. Um, that's the example we've already seen in the beginning of the talk. So just I have some text selected, and I uh, just want another button up here and uh, um, have it here. And actually doing that is a two-step process. Um, the first thing what you need to do is you need to define a new button here. Um, I, I, I'm also bad at uh, looking for icons, so I just took this Facebook icon here, which, of course, <laughs> Uh, was the first thing which I saw with Font Awesome. And, <laughs> and the second thing what you need to do is you need to change the, uh, you need to have a CK editor rule which says if this thing is pressed, what should happen in the content area. This is the two parts we need to configure. And again, uh, we do currently do that in the manifest. Um, and you see these two parts from line um, 7 to uh, 15 is the first block, or 5 to 15. And from line 17 to 23 is the second block. So in the first block on top, we register the button. Uh, we say it's an icon button. We give it the icon name and these kind of things. And um, here we reference a formatting rule. So this thing, ref also this, this value, this string value, references this formatting rule defined down here. And then um, I'm also bad at CSS, so just I just add an inline style. You should not do that, please. But <laughs> as said, so just uh, this way you can modify any way. Uh, the the uh, you, you can actually modify um, your, your your classes or add, add additional styles or any of these. Um, yeah, question. Um, 
So, I, I mean, like the top one is a custom NEOS definition. The bottom one, um, actually, this part is part of a CK Editor API, and the, this one is also a CK Editor API, but which we wrapped to make it more usable. Um, so uh, don't worry too much about these details. Um, we might also expose for these kind of things another API so that you can configure it using settings YAML. That can be do, for instance. But that's just the internals, you know? Um, so we'll probably create more high-level APIs based on that. But this is just the foundation. So the principle, if you want to extend something, is always you go to the registry, you change some things, you add them, some things to it. And um, yeah, that's the way it works. And we can do that also um, in the longer run. We could add, I don't know, settings YAML to configure these classes so you don't need this code here, for instance. So don't worry too much about it. It's just important that it works and that it's accessible for you should you need it. That's actually the most important thing, I think. Right. Um, now let's talk a little about unplanned extensibility. Um, so there are cases where uh, the UI components in NEOS don't fit your project. Like um, you are having a big, big news website and these news don't fit for the page tree basically. So performance wise or also don't make sense for the structure. So actually what you can do uh, in, in NEOS as well or in this, in this UI as well, is you can, for instance, remove the full uh, uh, navigate component, make it empty, and replace it by something else. So I just made it empty. I didn't want to reprogram the whole thing, so um, I just emptied it. But in the same way, you can just uh, fill it again with just any other component you like, and you can just completely modify this functionality. You need to be aware um, this is unplanned, so if you use that, um, be aware things might change over time. We still try to to provide upgrade nodes if this happens, um, but it's generally possible to, to um, do that. And it's the same, I, I don't show a code example for that one now, I thought it's enough code actually <laughs> for now. Um, but it's the same principle. So actually there are, uh, in the registry there is one part where the components reside, so like the main areas of the site, the, the left sidebar, the containers and these kind of things. And you can actually go to this registry and replace these components by something else. And this way you can basically modify any part of the NEOS UI. And because we also have internal support for theming, um, you can actually do crazy things like restyle the icons. I'm also not a designer, as you know. Uh, you can restyle the icons just in some part of the UI. You could either do that globally for the full UI, but you could also even override it for some part of the UI, uh, which I've just shown as an example um, up here for, um, for that. You don't need to remember all of that code. Um, it's on GitHub, actually. Um, so in the NEOS repository, there's, um, there's a package called NEOS UI Extensibility Examples. And in there, you find all the examples I've just shown. There's an instruction how to run that. Um, right, so that's basically how to get started on that. All right, so you might wonder, if not, so now what we've done is we've, we've seen um, the 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 basic state, the current state, we've talked a lot about extensibility. So you might wonder, okay, what is actually the status of this project now? Can I use it? And what about it? You know, is it finished? And no, it's not finished. But I'm really, really glad to announce that um, actually starting today, this is, we can call this a 100 beta 1. So, um, <laughs> thanks. So don't, there's, it, it's not yet tagged in the Git repository. We'll do that in the upcoming days. But actually, um, what we have done um, until beginning of last week is uh, um, just try it out in the demo site and fix the issues we found there. And of course, the demo site is not really uh, um, representative for all kinds of customer websites. So what we've done uh, uh, in the in the Neo Sprint before the um, the, the, the conference actually, so beginning of the week, uh, we just tried the UI on all kinds of our clients' website, of our own websites. I think we tested like 10 websites or something and uh, fixed the things we saw there. And this is the process, this is an ongoing process where we actually need your help as well. So um, it was quite cool because last week we had like, I think, 12 or 15 people working on just fixing all these tiny things you encounter when you try it out. 
uh, to make a smooth experience for you. So I think beta one is quite justified. So what does that mean? Um, um, the UI is just a package. Um, I'll just explain that. Um, so the new UI is in beta for now, um, and the old UI stays, stays the default. That's the case for Neo 3.1, which we'll release soon. Um, that means in the next weeks, one or two weeks, I'm not sure. But um, it's right around the corner. Um, then we have uh, Neo 3.2, um, and either in Neo 3.2 or 3.3, we say uh, the new UI will be the default for new projects. Um, when we do that, depends a little on your feedback. So if there are areas where we feel we still need to improve and iterate on, it might take a little longer. Um, if there are no issues or nobody tests it, <laughs> then we probably do it earlier. Um, um, right. And as soon as we do that, we deprecate the old UI. So that means um, that means. Um, there won't be bigger changes anymore. We basically just leave it as it is, so to ensure nothing breaks for you. And we'll ship the version 3.3 LTS in, let me think, I think end of the year, beginning of next year, year somewhere. And this still includes the old UI. So that means the old current Ember-based UI will at least stay in the, in the code base if you keep the LTS version for the upcoming three years, so you have time to uh, if you have custom editors written, for instance, these kinds of things to, uh, that you have time to migrate. And then with NEOS 4.0, which is the next major release after the 3.3 LTS, at this point we remove the old UI and then the new UI is just the default, the only one which exists basically, and that's just the process. So you might actually wonder, okay, how to get this thing? So it can be installed alongside the old UI, um, so that means it's just a package you find on packages on Composer, and you can just add it there. Um, I'll show you that in, a, in the next slide. Um, and then you can just switch between using the one or the other. Um, currently, we, we would not yet recommend that for production systems because there are one or two glitches we still want to fix to ensure we don't impact the production systems uh, by doing that. That's why we say, please, currently just for development machines, but I think in the upcoming, um, upcoming weeks, we'll also fix these issues, and I think then it's safe to uh, add the UI if you, if you just want to try it, and, or if, your customer, uh, if you want to explain to your customer what happens, to also try it uh, on a production system, because it should not modify your old uh, UI in any way, the, the, the way the old code works, basically. Um, you can basically use both then. Um, so, how to install that? Just using Composer. Um, currently, you have to install these two packages, uh, Neos UI and Neos UI Compiled, um, because you don't want to compile it yourself, usually. Um, currently, it's still Dev Master. That will change as soon as we have tagged the beta version. Um, then, this will be Dev Beta or no, Beta 1 or something like that. Um, and as said, currently we, we recommend to install it using the development flag to ensure it doesn't end up in your production systems for now. As said, the development flag will go away in the upcoming weeks. And then um, you can actually use it. You just go to your website, you press NEOS, and then you don't, uh, and you add an exclamation mark at the end. So it's not just NEOS, but it's NEOS exclamation mark in the URL, and this way you will end up with the new UI. So. Please try it out. Give us feedback. Tell us what works, what doesn't work. If your web website breaks, if it doesn't, every feedback is valuable. We want to catch all these edge cases we missed so far. And let's make that awesome together. Thank you. So, are there any questions? Yes, there's one question here. Is NEOS 3.0 uh, recommended? Or does um, it work on 2.3 LTS? No, it will not work on 2.3 LTS, um, because you know we did all this namespace changing and so on, and um, so it would require quite some work to maintain both versions in parallel. So that means the first version that is actually works as NEOS 3.0. Neo Good point. Next question. Any question still? Yeah, question in the back.
Are there any plans to uh, develop custom view helpers for, for back-end modules to, to use parts of the UI, such as the reference editor in my custom modules? Mm -hmm. um, so generally, yes. So um, I think in the longer run, we'll also... So actually, there are two answers to that. The first one is uh, we are already publishing the individual components, stuff like a select box, stuff like these buttons and these kind of things. We publish these on NPM already, so you can use them in your custom React applications at the current point in time. And the second point is... Um, we actually first want to make the content module really, really, really well working. Um, afterwards, it would be really nice to um, to also add stuff like uh, rewrite the media module based on it, for instance, or just you know build a platform out of it that you can use it in your own modules. Um, but it's just currently not possible to estimate when this will happen because just currently we really want to focus on the content editing experience and they are um, want to first make sure our editors have a great experience. That's like the first step we want to focus on. Right. Next question. Any question? Okay. So thank you a lot. Um, please um, give a, a, another applause for the full team um, who did that. So thanks, everybody. Okay, thank you.